All right, everyone, I'd like to welcome everyone to another webinar series brought to you by Easy Facility. Today, we're going to be focusing on how to properly upstart and maintain a sports league that you may have at your facility. So it could be a kickball league, a softball league, a basketball league, any league that may pertain to your facility. We're going to focus on and try to uh, get some tips and pointers today. All right, so who am I and what experience do I have running leagues, okay? So who am I to start? Um, some of you guys may have spoken to me before. I am a trainer at Easy Facility or a customer success specialist. So either when you bought the software, you signed on with your sales rep, and then you got passed to me to learn how to use the system. Or I've done a follow-up call, and you've heard from me uh, to make sure everything's going okay with the system. And what experience do I have running a league? Um, so when I was 19 years old, um, I started a actual softball league. And uh, the story goes is that um, basically we would have pickup games and about 30 to 40 people would come down to these pickup games. And I turned to my friend and I said, why don't we just start a league and see how it goes? Maybe this will translate into something good. Um, so this league that started as a small 36 person four team league grew to a 104 person league with eight teams so progressively throughout the out time it grew it got better we have a website we have permits we have insurance we have jerseys we have recognition through the town so things have progressively gotten better and more efficient over the past eight years and a quick couple stories that I like to talk about with my league that I've run. I've raised over $100,000 for sick children or upkeep of the league. Um, throughout that time, we try to give back to the community. We are a nonprofit league. So two more recent fundraisers that we've had were for a girl who has leukemia. We raised $4,500 for her. And another one recently was uh, a 9-11 firefighter who passed away, we raised $5,000 for him as well. All right, so first things first, let's get into how to properly start a league, okay? So the first thing you need to know is that when you create a league to start, okay, um, you feel like you're on top of the world, you feel like you can handle this all on your own like I did. Now, what I would recommend is that you do not go at it completely alone. If you go at it completely alone, there's going to be a lot of moving pieces that you're going to miss, and you can't be Superman, okay? I can give you a prime example. I was better at the back end of setting up a league, such as permits, insurance, getting jerseys, um, the website. It was a little more on the back end side. I had a co-commissioner who dealt with the schedule. I was not as good setting up the schedule um, as opposed to, you know, him setting up the back end stuff. So it was great. We kind of went hand in hand how things went. Okay. So one thing I can recommend to everyone is find someone to be able to help you figure out what you can and can't do. You can't control everything. So work slowly and work your way to a whole as opposed to trying to be Superman. Okay. Now I also recommend that you find a centralized location for your fields, okay? Now, I play in some leagues where they'll send you, you know, miles away and it could be an inconvenience. Try to find something that's gonna be convenient for everybody in your league, whether it's in your hometown, whether it's in parks near you. Uh, obviously, getting permits and insurance can, can be, uh, you know, a pain at times, but the easier it's gonna be for your clients, such as your players, to be able to get to the field, the more money you'll make, okay? So moving right along, all right, next day, I kind of hit on this before with my co-commissioner that I run for my softball league, scheduling. To me, this is one of the most crucial parts of setting up a league, okay? Why is this so crucial? You can see I wrote, this is clean schedule equals less headaches. When you have a nice clean schedule and everyone that's in the league or the captain is going to be able to know where they're playing, what time their games are going to be held, who their opponents are, and they're not kind of on the fly, not knowing until a day before when 
their games are going to be held. Everything becomes a lot easier. Okay? I'll give you an example. I play in a flag football league, and they don't tell us until about a day before where we're going to be playing. People have lies. People have things planned out. So when you tell them a day before, they get frustrated and they say, I don't really like this league. Let's maybe try some competitor and see if that's going to be better off for us. So you create the schedule. You create that foundation where it's going to be a base where you're not going to worry about those specific things. Everything will fall into line for the schedule. All right. Now, financial plan. Okay. Up starting a league, it's going to be very expensive. Where do you get money for this? Okay, maybe you have some money where you've been saving and you say, this is where I want to go with it. For my league, it was nonprofit. I never made a cent of it. So I, every single season, had to figure out a way to pay for permits, pay for insurance, pay for jerseys, pay for the website. How am I going to be able to afford that? Okay, so the first thing you want to be able to do is keep the cost low for the players. So when the players come in, they say, oh, wow, it's this specific price, and it's, gonna, it's a lot lower than the league that I currently play. And let's give that a shot. Keeping it low at first and keeping the quality at a standard where it's going to match either a league that they played in before or if they're new, it's gonna, they're going to have that high standard when they think about going to another league. That's going to keep you guys retaining the players and clients that you have. Okay. And another big thing, too, when those things all go hand in hand, such as quality and keeping the cost low, you could poach from other leagues and get other teams to join in your league or tournament that you're going to be having. Okay. Another big thing is fundraising. Okay. Now, brings in money for you. You've got to figure out a way to fundraise for your specific league. Okay. One thing that I did was I would hold either events at bars or I would have, you know, sponsored uh, companies come in and, and, you know, if you come in and get this food, they give you X amount of money, okay? So figuring out a way to fundraise and take a little bit of pressure off you can help you when you're setting up a league, all right? So you can go to restaurants, you can go to bars, bars definitely for a men's league or, you know, someone like my age who's 27 who, you know, you can go there and say, hey, if we come in and we bring X amount of people, you'll pay for our, uh, you know, a quarter of our league for the season. Um, it's good for you. It's good for them. It brings in business for both ends, okay? So fundraising will alleviate the pressure that maybe you have to put down extra cash to be able to have this fundraiser run, okay? Okay, now marketing. Marketing your league. Especially in this day and age, especially with my generation, marketing has become easier for yourself, for the clients, for anyone along those lines, especially with social media. Okay, I'm going to hit on that in the next slide. But you'll see, marketing, I just hit on this before. Get sponsorships. Get people to come down and uh, sponsor your league. Maybe they'll put their names on the jersey. Say, you know, I'll put your... I'll put your company on the back of the jersey if you pay for this team's uh, fees. Sure, absolutely no problem. It helps them, like I mentioned before, helps you, okay? Another big thing is let your players market your league, okay? Now, what do I mean by this? I'll give you a prime example. I play in a kickball league where after the game, what you can do is if you take a picture with your team and the logo of the kickball league, all right, you'll get points added on for sportsmanship points, okay? So what does that mean? If, for example, at the end of the season, the teams are tied, they have the same record, and they have to have a tiebreaker, if you post more on social media, you will get that tiebreaker. So you think that, you know, eh, you know I don't know if that's really going to work with my league, and, but you think about it, you implement it, teams are competitive, and they say, hey, we got to do this. We got to get that first place seat. And basically, they market, it, market your league for you. They post it online. They'll see all that information. They'll say, oh, wow, this is such a great league. I want to know more about it. Brings you to your Facebook page. Brings you to your Instagram account. Helps you in all sense. So the players, especially my generation and older, they love social media so they can market it for you. 
Okay. Another one would be Google Ads. Now, Google Ads essentially is a way that you can pay for your lead to be upfront when they Google leads within the town. Okay. So it's a small fee; it's not too bad. But when they go online and they want to find a soccer league or you know a volleyball league or beach volleyball, especially with the summer coming, if you have your league at the top, there's more of a chance that they're going to click into you first. They'll see your information and say, okay, this is great. This is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for Tuesday nights, day off for Tuesday nights, and I'm going to sign up for this league. Okay. Now, I mentioned this before. We were going to hit on social media and your facility. Okay. Now, I mentioned before about the players being able to market your league through social media. Absolutely. Okay. Now, you can create specific content through social media. Okay. Now, when I was running my league, and when I still run it to this day, um, you know, most of the time I would create articles based on what happened during the games during the week. I would write write satire articles about specific players that were in the league, so it would make them feel special and make them feel like they're really a part of this family, this crew that you have when you're in this league. Everyone wants to get to know each other when they're in a league. They want to get to know that player how that person plays, oh, he's the best, watch out for him, he hits that way. Everyone wants to be in a group. They want to be part of something. So that's why they join a league, okay? And what I see a lot of people do now with social media is on Instagram, they'll put a player of the day. They'll have their referees come down and they'll record some great plays and they'll put a top 10 play on Instagram. Everything's accessible now. So all these little things that you're going to be able to do to get your players excited and, and motivated to keep playing with your league, all that is available through social media. So definitely utilize this at, your, at this point uh, with your facility. Okay. Now, I mentioned before, expenses and costs for setting up your league, they can be very, very crucial, and it can be hard when you're up starting a league. Okay. Now, what you usually want to hit around when you're when you're running a league is around a 20. I usually see an, an average of a 25 percent um, revenue stream when you're running a league per year. Okay. Now that may be hard when you're first starting up, but the more you get into it, the more your league grows and, and grows stronger. Um, you'll see that you're going to pay for your permits, you're going to pay for the insurance, but the money is going to continuously grow if the quality of the league is there. Okay. So, obviously, equipment, referees are going to be expensive as well, okay? You've got to pay them a certain amount per game, okay? But, once again, quality, everything will continuously grow and be stronger as the years and time goes on, all right? So, you'll see that margin maybe grow from that 25 to 30, and then 30 to 35. So, just keep pushing, keep grinding at it, and you'll see that, that you know, end result. Okay. So... I got through basically my talk of how to set up a league, how to get some pointers on, on some things that you can hit on. Okay, but how can Easy Facility help you? Okay, so we have something called Easy Leagues. Obviously, if you guys are running a league um, and you guys have Easy Facility, maybe you have Easy Leagues. Maybe you know about the scheduling wizard. Maybe there's people on this call right now that don't know about the scheduling wizard. Okay, so I'll give you another example. With the scheduling wizard, this will set up once you have your team set up within Easy Facility. So you get all your teams gathered, you're ready to go, and it's about two weeks before the league starts, and you want to start setting up your schedule. Okay. Now for my league, before I knew about Easy Facility, okay, I would sit with my co-commissioner for a Saturday and a Sunday full, and we would draw up this tedious schedule. It'd be a headache. Things wouldn't work. You'd be having paper, throwing it out, you know, drawing up new schedules. If I would have known about Easy Facility and the scheduling wizard, it would have taken me about five to ten minutes to set this up. Obviously, things don't always go the way they're supposed to, but this will take away so much time and energy and headache off your hands. So you can see with the scheduling wizard, and if you have Easy Leads, it will cut down on the time that you're using to set up your schedule. Okay, so that is a huge part of Easy Leagues that we offer to you guys. 
online registration as well. So you can have the teams register online, okay? My flag football league, I have to go register at a bar and I have to stand outside for an hour to put my information down, put my team name down, give them all that information. With Easy Facility and Easy Leagues, you can register online. I can go in, put in my information, put my team name in, and just make that payment online. And what you can also do is you can put in your team roster as well and you can divvy up the payments amongst each player. So think about from the captain standpoint, not having to hassle your players and say, hey man, you haven't paid me yet, can you just you know, pay me back instead of having easy facility and using it and sending him an email and saying, hey, just make this payment online, you're done, I don't have to hound you anymore for this money. Okay, so another great tool that Easy Facility and Easy Leagues uses. And then the last thing I'll say for the Easy Leagues part, okay, would be the public page. Okay, now with the public page here, this basically is a separate website that the public or the captains or the players can take a look at and they can see their standings, their schedule, team schedules. So break it down into individual team schedules. You can print it out, hang it on your fridge. It will give you news updates. It will give you uh, classifies. Maybe there's a free agent that hasn't uh, joined yet and he needs a team. He can put up a flyer on the public page to be able to post himself so a team that's looking for someone can give him a call. So it gives you all this great information and limits you from having to um, you know, go in, buy a separate website for just scheduling and, and um, standings and all that kind of stuff. So it's a great tool you're going to be able to use. So take a look at these four things and you know, see if these apply to your setup within leagues or tournaments or anything along those lines. And another big thing, this one stood out to me a lot, and um, this is called email alerts. And I'm going to touch on the news as well, I did mention it before. But the email alerts, okay, so for example, let's say you're running a league and the field gets flooded or you can't play on that field that night and you go, oh man, I have to contact you know, these five, six teams so they're going to be playing on a different field. Now, email alerts, what you can do is when you go and you edit the games within Easy Leagues, you change the field from field one to field two. Once you hit save, it will send them a game change alert, which essentially will send all the players and the captain's email saying, your field has been changed from field one to field two. Now think about it, if you're not utilizing that, you're sending out text messages, you're sending out an email blast, you're typing this up to specific clients, okay? So instead of dealing with that headache, Easy Leagues will do this for you where you don't have to go in and start creating manual emails and text messages for each captain and player, okay? So that's a big thing. And also you can see it says player game reminder, okay? So if I had a game coming tonight, you could see, you could set a time frame. You could say, let them know that within six hours that their game is happening at eight o'clock tonight. You could send them a second reminder three hours after that and say, okay, just a reminder you're playing at this field. So once again, it's staying on top of the players, the coaches, so nobody's confused, nobody's sending you emails saying, what time are we playing? Where are we playing? Who is our opponent? It takes away all that information and all of the headache that you're going to be um, you know, obviously having when you're running a league. Things won't always go as planned when you run a league. Nothing is easy, okay? You will have those players, you will have those coaches that are super competitive and they're going to consistently email you, but this will reduce it, let's say, by 60-70%. All right, so we essentially have hit the end of the webinar, so you will see down below there is a question box, okay? And if you have any questions or comments that you would like to know, please let me know and I'm going to be able to answer them for you.
All right, so I have a question from David. Uh, he said, why does the time slot matrix shuffle the team's leads down the left and the time slots at the top instead of being in league order and time order? All right, David, so I'm actually going to write your information down. We're going to contact you separately. Uh, we want to just be able to take a look at your league and your tournament as you're setting it up and make sure all those settings are correct. So we absolutely will answer that question. We just want to get to you on a personal level. Okay. All right, I have a question from Stacy, and she said, can I add the public page to my website? That is a fantastic question. So what you can actually do with that public page that, you were, that we mentioned before, you have something called iframe where you can actually embed it into your website. So you can embed your scheduling, you can embed sign-ups, uh, leagues or tournaments, any of that you can embed right into your website. So if you have your web developer, we have this code that you can put in, whichever one you're looking for, and it can be embedded into your particular website. We have another question from Jana. She said, can you send these slides out through email? Absolutely, we can. All right, so we will make sure we send that out to you guys, whoever is on this webinar right now. Okay. All right, I have a question from Lacey. She says, will it send text as well as email? At the moment, it does not do that, but we are always looking to explore and expand um, some ideas, so I'm actually going to write that down. We'll talk to our developers, see if we can kind of get that uh, implemented right into the lead portion. All right, we have another minute. Don't have any other questions at the moment, but we'll hang in if someone else has an additional question. So it doesn't seem like I have any other questions. So if you want to see this webinar after the fact, you can go to our YouTube page, um, www.youtube.com slash user slash easy facility, all right, or you just type in easy facility on YouTube, it will pop up, all right, and you'll be able to see all the other webinars that we have. Okay, and I thank everyone for joining me on this webinar today. If you have any additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me, our success team, or anyone who works here. We are always here to help. Have a great rest of the day, and hopefully I'll hear from you soon.